Hi everybody, my name is Erin Wilson and today we'll be discussing the problem of can Long Beach achieve equitable access to parks and recreation. There are several problems when we look back over the history of park access that tell us why park access is an equitable history of systemic racism, disparities, redlining, not coincidentally the communities that have the least amount of access to um, open spaces and recreation are the worst off not just physically but also financially and that these communities are predominantly communities of color. So my hypothesis is if park access is equitable then more citizens will be healthier and they will be safer. If we take a look at the history of public parks, we go all the way back to the beginning before our country was even a nation. The first park was Boston Commons in Boston, built in 1684 as a respite for the working poor. In these densely um, populated communities, there was a great need for people to have access to the outdoors, to fresh air, for a place to congregate, and to have fellowship. And so the original parks were built for the working class poor. Central Park was actually um, unfortunately built over a huge community of African American homeowners who were then displaced and though the park was originally built for the um, more poor communities, people of color communities in that part of Manhattan, today um, really very few people can afford to even live near the park and the um, home values around the park are the highest in the whole city. And if we look at more recent inequities um, following those, the, those um, original parks and what they were built intended to do, um, systemic racism and redlining really played a part into not just who had access to parks, but where parks were built. Um, segregation, of course, made it impossible for people of color to access things like tennis courts, swimming pools, and golf courses. Um, when desegregation happened and public pools were open again, uh, more well-to-do white families just built private pools in their backyards. And the demand for public pools slowed so much so that um, cities stopped building public pools in the communities. And really whom that affected were the people of color who stopped having access to swimming, to swimming areas, especially um, in the you know, central part of our country. So not surprisingly, today 65% of African American youth cannot swim, though 64% of African American youth say they would like to swim. So this is an unfortunate example of that there's not, the problem isn't that there is an interest in the activity, there's just um, no way to access it. The means aren't there. And we can also look at golf courses. The PGA said that last year of everyone who stepped foot on a golf course for the first time, only 18% were minorities, which is a real problem when you look across the landscape of our uh, nation's makeup. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. Also adding to the problem were that the elitists began to build their own private golf courses, um, swimming clubs, tennis clubs, and so forth that kept certain communities out and allowed certain communities in. Today, current challenges facing the park system really have to do with money. Um, parks are one of the first places that are on the chopping block when it's time for budget cuts because unfortunately city, cities and communities view them as non-essential. Also the other problem that many um, park departments face is that there's just no land to build a park on and of course in Long Beach that is very true where we are a very dense uh, and expensive place to live. So there's just not access, there's not availability, and it's not affordable to buy up land to build new, new large public parks. And if we take look back at just a quick check on how big our Department of Parks, Recreation, and Marine is in the city of Long Beach, it's very big. We manage 162 parks, five golf courses, um, we also have the world's largest municipal marina, which takes up three smaller marinas running across six miles of um, ocean land and oceanfront land and beaches in our city. So that's a pretty amazing fact. Unfortunately, most people who don't live near the water in Long Beach probably aren't accessing those marinas and the recreational programs that are offered along the water. 
So who's responsible for park equity? Is, this, is the city responsible? Is the Department of Park Recreation and Marine responsible? Uh, a liberal, generally speaking, a liberal point of view might say, well, we're all responsible because everyone should benefit from parks. And this could be looked back at historically how liberals did help to vote certain laws that made um, things more equitable for all, including um, the Civil Rights Act, the Community Development Block Grant Program, which funded parks in distressed communities, the Americans with Disabilities Acts, as well as um, making sports and other activities more accessible for women and people of color. Democrats, generally speaking, are also more likely to pay more in taxes if it benefits the greater good. So that's why in 2016, Long Beach voters did pass Measure A, which was a bond that provided funding to um, improve parks across the city as well as other infrastructures. That bond being passed also meant that our taxes went up to the highest in the whole nation. So. Uh, though it narrowly passed 51.1%, predominantly Democratic voters did push that over the line to make it possible. Um, another concern that liberals have with park access is that it does lead to gentrification. Beautified spaces tend to be used um, by more wealthy communities, and so um, long-term citizens and cultures might be nervous about um, a big improvement project coming to their neighborhood where they will feel unseen or displaced. Uh, it also increases housing prices and prices people out who can no longer afford to live there. And that's a real shame because then we lose, that, lose the culture of the neighborhood. So parks, while they are a beautiful thing in and of themselves, do not always lead to good. A conservative point of view might generally say, well, I don't want to pay more in taxes, so I'm not going to, um, that, that doesn't concern me. Most people can agree that parks are good, but um, we may not agree about how to pay for them. And here in Long Beach, though, we are predominantly a democratic um, city and we did pass Measure A, it was still not enough to fund uh, the debt that the department had. And so what a lot of parks departments have to do is create a foundation where they privately fund money to offset costs. And that's true here in the city of Long Beach with our partners in Parks Foundation. Um, Long Beach voters, uh, the, the Republican voters did predominantly vote against Measure A in 2020 when it went back up on the ballot, 48.2%. Um, also interesting to note that the Long Beach PRM department did, did conduct a huge strategic plan um, after two years of surveys and interviews in direct response to the murder of George Floyd. The department began to reckon with not only its racist past, but the disparities of um, park access across the city. So their strategic plan is looking to change some of these patterns and how parks are viewed by all citizens. Uh, Republicans also tend to adopt the NIMBYism point of view, not in my backyard, where they're opposed to larger infrastructures in the communities. Parks, though, um, like I said, everyone agrees can be a good thing, can also draw in certain problems, which include homelessness, gang activity, drug and alcohol use, and littering. Uh, my point of view is that we all prosper when everyone can play safely outside. Long Beach is a wonderful city with great weather, and we are so lucky that we can be outside almost every day of the year playing. So um, to think that there's certain neighborhoods that cannot do that safely is a real shame. I would be shocked if Long Beach's strategic plan regarding um, park equity and development came to fruition, as it just seems like a very big um Big, big step to take. And um, we can see here that central Long Beach is the most densely packed part of the city, making up 50% of our population just in four zip codes. Um, but looking at the map, you can see that there's very few green spaces and very few parks. So that is my concern is for these communities that live in central Long Beach, um, how do they access green space when there's just not land available? The strategic plan includes well, needing more money, of course, and to address the, the lack of land to convert unused lots and use mobile parks 
to bring parks to denser areas. So who has access to all these wonderful parks that Long Beach runs, 162 parks to be exact? Uh, well, most are on one side of town and that's the east side. We can take a brief look at this infograph provided by the PRM department to see that, um, that there's many parks and many playgrounds and many offerings, but they are really all on one side of town. There's been over a million visitors to El Dorado Park, which is a large park on the east side of Long Beach, bordering Orange County. I would be surprised if most of those park visitors last year were from the city. And again, we take a broader uh, look at the map of parks and bike routes in the city. And it's pretty clear that you can see that the, the larger green spaces are all on the east side. The city's largest, six largest parks are all on the east side as well. Um, but the west and central and north side of Long Beach have very little green space despite housing most of our population. And another brief infograph to take a look at is the history of redlining and park equity and how it directly responds or correlates to that middle graph which shows where the people of color in Long Beach live. And lastly, it does directly correlate to health. Um, the city of Long Beach uh, health data is in line with the rest of the nations where African Americans are at the highest risk for hypertension and Latinx are at the highest rates uh, risk of diabetes. And in North Long Beach where there's um, where it is considered a park poor neighborhood, 20.2% of its citizens are African American. And on the west side, which is even more park poor, as well as um, being pollution ridden because of the port, 43.3% are Latinx. So not, not, um, not shocking that uh, these numbers do correlate to the communities that have the least amount of access to open spaces and recreation. So in order for me to address this problem and learn more about it, um, I'm going to conduct a series of research to find out what park equity looks like in our city. And the methodology to do so includes several forms of data collection. My research methods will include a um, quantitative method, including random probability, and qualitative method, including homogeneous sampling. The methods for collecting data include interviewing Long Beach residents um, specific to certain zip codes and using surveys that are both digital and in-person for citizens to fill out. And then lastly, looking at data already provided by PRM. My sampling size will be random and it will just be 100 residents from my target population, which includes the park poor zip codes of Long Beach, 90805, 90806, 90810, and 90813. I will interview 100 residents from this target population. And um, my survey will include a consent form and a brief survey that is about 12 questions. They will include um, questions such as when someone has visited a Long Beach Park, and if so, how recently, and um, if so, how, you know, was that park within walking distance? If not, how far was it by car? Um, I am seeking to find out if citizens use parks in their neighborhood or prefer to go to parks in other parts of the neighborhood where they might consider them more safe or more nice. Um, I will do this also with recreation programs. Long Beach offered um, last year, I think, 250,000 courses. Um, so I want to find out how many people are utilizing those courses and if they're the kind of course offerings that someone actually wants or needs. Um, and then lastly, I will also do that when we look at our marine department. That includes sailing, swimming, um, boating, and other activities on the water how many people um, who do not live in those neighborhoods know of those offerings and are utilizing them. 
Uh, and lastly, here is my brief bibliography where I found the information to conduct this report as well as my survey questions. Thank you so much for your time.